All right. So we're back with another exciting episode here with Dr. Pastor Jimmy Reed with globalmanifestations.org. And uh, Dr. Jimmy, we've had some really great calls and we keep building on some of the stuff that uh, we've gone through on some of the presentations. For anybody that's watching this for the first time, you can go into our playlist on YouTube. We've got maybe five or six or more other videos with Dr. Pastor Jimmy Reed. And you can go in and get more exciting information and learn more about this and global manifestations. And with that being said, uh, Dr. Jimmy Reed, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing amazing. And yourself? Absolutely fantastic. And uh, today we are talking about all can learn to see. Yes, we are. Because I all can learn to see. I know a lot of people, uh, I wanted to clear the air about that because a lot of people think they can't see, but they can. And um, God has given us a great imagination too to help that along in different ways. But today we're going to mostly focus on the spiritual gifts because seeing is an, an, it's an anointing and or a gift. Seeing is and uh, everyone can pull on that because they're born of God, born of the spirit of God. He's the one that holds our spirit. So if that be the case, then they should be able to see. Beautiful. So we're talking about all the spiritual gifts that we've been given. And you have another uh, really nice slideshow here presented. So do you want to um, do you want to get started on that first? Yes, we'll get started on that. And it's, I'm not going to talk about all the spiritual gifts, just the seeing today. So in, okay. uh, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. And it says, now about the spiritual gifts, the special endowment of supernatural energy, brethren, I do not want you to be misinformed. Now that's Apostle Paul talking. And I love it the way the Amplified puts it the special endowments of supernatural energy. I absolutely love that. Then that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 31, it says, for in this way, you can give testimony, prophesying, and thus interpreting the divine will and purpose one by one, so that all may be instructed and all may be stimulated and encouraged. And then one more scripture here. I won't read all the scriptures that I have through each PowerPoint, but I wanted to get started with that. Second Timothy chapter one, verse six says, of course, my pages are stuck together. It says, that is why I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers of fan, fan, the embers, fan the flame, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination, like the laying on of hands that takes place, people can gather gifts and anointing just even by the laying on of hands by someone who carries those gifts. And we don't have to wait and hope that the Holy Spirit will cause our gift to activate. We can just uh, be in a meeting like we had a prophetic fire meeting last week and many people's hands, hands were laid on everyone and at least four people professed they were healed. And God releases mantles and he releases his fresh fire and wind. So, uh, but a lot of that comes by seeing what God wants to do in the meetings. Two main scriptures have been misunderstood and mis misapplied. First Corinthians chapter 12. We'll go back to that for a moment. And in that scripture, we're going to, in that chapter, we're going to read verses seven through 11.
And it says here in the Amplified, verses start at verse seven, but to each one is given the manifestation of Holy Spirit, the evidence, the spiritual illumination of the spirit for good and profit. Profit meaning P-R-O-F-I-T. To one is given in and through the Holy Spirit, the power to speak a message of wisdom and to another, the power to express a word of knowledge and understanding according to the same Holy Spirit to another wonder working faith by the same Holy Spirit, to another the extraordinary powers of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophetic insight, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, to another the ability to discern and distinguish between the utterances of true spirits and false ones, to another, various kinds of unknown tongues. To another, the ability to interpret such tongues. And one more scripture, verse 11 out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. All these gifts, achievements, abilities are inspired and brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who appropriates to each person individually exactly as he chooses. So one of the reasons why uh, I put the misunderstanding is people say, well, I only get the one. I just get the one anointing or the one gift. That's not true at all. God will give to us what's needed at any given time that it's needed and needs to be there if we're willing to do that. And then people can also go and read 1 Peter 4.10. How can God be just, just, if he commands me to do something for which he has not equipped me. But if only some Christians have been given the gift of discerning of spirits, then how can God ask that we all discern good from evil? There are three different levels of gifts. For example, just because you can prophesy doesn't mean you have the gift of prophecy. Because anyone can prophesy. And many times people do it and don't even know that they're doing it because it's a level of edification, exhortation, and comfort. And some people I've heard say wonderful things that were edifying and comforting. They'll say, where'd that come from? I don't even know where I received that from. That's, that's weird, that's different. And it was really exactly what that person they spoke to needed at the time. But God doesn't, he does say that we can discern spirits and things like that. He doesn't just give us one particular thing. If you walk into a room and the atmosphere is yucky, you're already discerning spirits then. If you walk into a room and the atmosphere is full of glee and happiness and peace, you're discerning the spirits there too. Mm -hmm. It's just that we haven't been taught to recognize what's happening, what that is. And I think that because we haven't been taught who we really are as spirit beings, because that's who we are first, that we must have been taught about the soul and the body and how to be good people and all of that, then we we don't recognize when we're recognizing something different. Mm. You can stop me anytime if you have any comments or questions. The no, New Testament prophet is supposed to... Go ahead. I really love the I, I love where the whole thing started that we all have these su supernatural powers that can be activated. And one of the first slides that you had talked about from Tim that we all have the power to activate this, you know, this these supernatural powers or these abilities within us. And so we're building on that with all these other slides, but it's just such a amazing way to start it off to know that we all have these these abilities within us and it's just a matter of understanding that they're there and then and then calling upon them to to activate and and then seeing this through the prophets and all explained throughout the bible you know really shows that you know the people back in those days were very enlightened you know they were very very knowledgeable 
And, you know, this is just, I find it very exciting. Yes, it is very exciting. And, you know, it's all has to, it all has to do with the energy that we carry from our spirit being, mm -hmm. not from our soul, because we don't want, we, I mean, we can say nice and good things from our soulish realm, of course. But you know how in some past uh, teachings, we've talked about being able to walk in more than one realm at a time. And realm, R-E-A-L-M. And that's because we're spirit. And then we're soul, spirit, soul, and body. And that's how God states it in the scriptures and how he has the uh, scribes write the scriptures when he's naming things, he always names the most important thing first. That's how we know that the spirit being is first because we were in him before we came here on this assignment. Because the scriptures do say that we're foreigners here, we're aliens. And that's why people can get another language by Holy Spirit because God, every nation has its own language and we're from another nation. So if we could even get that in our knower, and like in First um, Corinthians, I think it's chapter, this is just coming to me, chapter five, I believe. Okay, it's Second Corinthians five. And it says, know him no more after the flesh, meaning Christ, because he had risen. So we know he once walked the earth. Know no man after the flesh. So God is trying to see, uh, see that we understand that we are spiritual creatures, spiritual beings. Even when the word human is being mentioned, it's human beings because we are beings. So that's why we can move in and out of more than one realm. And that's why we can uh, move in and out of more than one anointing as needed. So the New Testament prophet is supposed to be equipping others for the work of the ministry. That's part of my calling. Having eyes, do you not see in Mark 18? Hebrews 5, 12 through 14 shows that a sign of all mature Christians is that they will be active in using discernment. Ephesians 1, 15 through 18 states that Paul didn't believe that only certain Christians could see in the spirit. So let's go to Ephesians and see what that what Paul is saying. Ephesians 1, verses 15 through 18. It says, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, the people of God, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. For I always pray to the God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory. And this is key, Sean, this is very key, that he may uh, grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, and you know the root word of revelation is revealed, of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. By having the eyes of your heart, so that's not our natural eye, flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you, that's everyone that's listening to my voice, called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set apart ones, so that you may know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his power in you for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. And it also says in the book of John uh, that we can do all the things that Jesus did and even greater things. So God isn't holding anything back and he's not holding a uh, dangling a carrot in front of us saying, try to catch this carrot. He gives us freely all of himself. 
in 2 Kings chapter 6, God has given us all spiritual eyes that would have worked perfectly before the fall of man. Of course, that's another teaching about the fall of man. God wants to spiritually clothe us and give us, I'm sorry, I wrote that twice, typed that twice, riches. So the riches are his riches, and you can't beat any riches beyond that. In Luke, it leads uh, to the conclusion that Jesus was not only healing the physically blind, which he certainly did, but also the spiritually blind. Matthew is not speaking of the physical eye. So we're going to look at Matthew right quick. Chapter 7. Starting at verse 1. Matthew 7, 1. It says, do not judge and criticize and condemn others so that you may not be judged and criticized and condemned yourself. Boy, that's important. For just as you judge and criticize and condemn others, you will be judged and criticized and condemned. And in accordance with the measure you use, that's so important, deal out to others, it will be dealt to you. Why do you stare? Why do you stare from without at the very small particle that is in your brother's eye, but do not become aware of the beam of timber that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me get the tiny particle out of your eye when there is the beam of timber in your own eye. You hypocrite, first get the beam of tender, timber out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the tiny particle out of your brother's eye. So he's not speaking of the physical eye. He's speaking of the inner eye that you're you you feel like you can judge someone else, their insights and what they're doing and their responses and how they're acting and the decisions that they make when you haven't judged your own. Mm. Because we're all good in our own eyes, right? Right, exactly. We're legends in our own minds, in right? John, <laughs> yes. I mean, we're we're wonderful. Absolutely. <laughs> In 1 John chapter 2, it said, he hates, hinders, obscures, and destroys Christ-like discernment. That's when people don't like the good, pure truth and the good, pure discernment. When they err on that side, because they'd rather have the other side shown that, or seen or known than the God side. You know, um, truth is, when you're doing a lot of wonderful things, people don't hear so much about it. It's when you do one thing that's not right, they blow it up and it's like everywhere. We've seen that before many times. And they forget all the good things that you've done and they only see and make known the things that, that you did that weren't right. So we should heed what the Apostle Paul said and eagerly desire the greater gift, which is 1 Corinthians 12, 31. The greater gift, we've talked about this before, is love. Love covers a multitude of things. Hatred uncovers even the smallest little thing. So that's all I have on all can see. It's done in a different kind of way, but our spiritual eyes, we should take note that it's our spiritual eyes that begin to pick at people and pick at Nick, Nick pick at little things that's going on around us. And we're supposed to be doing that with ourselves because if we're not doing something right, the greater one, the God himself, touches us and lets us know that's not right what you just did or you need to go and apologize or you need to forgive or this, that, or the other. And we discount all of that 
to see what someone else is doing that isn't right. And, or at least we think it's not right because it doesn't meet up to our standards, my standards. Why? Because my standards are the better standards, right? <laughs> that's what that's the way we are as a people. You know, that's what we think and believe. So God is saying all can see, all may see, but we, he wants us to see the God godness in people, not the evil things in people or their mm -hmm. flaws. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, one of the beautiful things is we've talked about this many times is that you know, we try to love and embrace everybody for who they are and what they are and understand that we're all in a different, you know, a different uh, realm of evolving, you know, towards that greater love and that activation of all those great gifts. So, you know, we we share and put compassion on those that are that are not seeing the way we might be seeing. And we count the blessings that we have that we can see what we are able to see. You know, obviously, there's much further to go. We all are, you know, trying to become better people and and do a better job as we go. But, you know, when you see the people that don't have the same perception or the same ability, it really, number one, lets you count the blessings that you've been given. And then also say, you know, um, rather than judging or nitpicking, we just share love and compassion and hope that they get to a place like, you know, like we're at where we can, you know, all have that same love and understanding. That's so true, Sean. You know, when um, when we still love people, no matter what's going on, the scriptures are clear about that's like pouring that hot oil on their head and it runs down and it just soaks into them. They're like, you know, I know I did wrong and they still love me. And I don't know how they could love me because I know they did this or that, and I spoke ill of them, but they're still loving me regardless. And then let God take it from there. You just do your love part. Right. And you know what's so what's so um, crazy is that that's really the one thing that's missing on our planet is just the ability for all that to all of us to do that with each other. You know, we're so um, locked in on this side, that side, this opinion, that opinion. Um, you know, we've talked about it before, but if we just said, look, at the end of the day, we all love each other. At the end of the day, we acknowledge that we're different. We see things differently, but we're all part of God's family. We're all part of God's children. And regardless of, you know, how you think or what you may think at the end of the day, I still love you and I still care about you and I wish nothing but the best. And when we start embracing that and we start letting all these barriers go down and all these walls go down that are being built around us. And some of it's actually being done in a very crafting way from those that really have probably more interest in us being divided than together. But as we start understanding that and we start having more of that compassion, I think we're going to find that our, you know, our uh, spiritual evolution is going to accelerate at a very fast pace. That's so true. Um, we're the best that he has, that God has. We were created in his likeness and image. And all the people that are around us, they're still the best that he has. Mm -hmm. Yes, we make choices and the choices aren't always the better choices uh, that even that God would say uh, he approves of. But the point is, is we just help them along and not talk about them in a negative way, discuss them in a negative way, because someone can always turn that pointed finger, you know, that you could, that you know, these fingers are pointing back at me right now. Even though I'm pointing one out that way, there are three that are focused on me. And so that's something that we have to really, it's something to really think about uh, before we speak ill of someone or do someone harm or whatever. It's interesting, too, because yes. as you get older, you know, like as you get a little bit older, you know, I find very often I look back and I'll say, gosh, I was that person at one time. I reacted in those ways at one time. I, you know, treated others like that and not saying certainly that I'm perfect by any stretch. But, you know, you look back and you say, wow, OK, I see people that are doing many of the same things that I once did. And, you know, through God's grace or just 
you know, through the aging process, you start understanding that I don't need to be judging so much. I don't need to voice so much of my opinion about what I think is better or best. It doesn't really, and in and the, and the, and the end of all things, it really doesn't matter. It's like, look, we're all going to see things a little differently. Certainly my views and my knowledge and my experiences in life have formed and developed me to think the way I do, but not everybody's going to have those same experiences and everybody's in a different, you know, stage of life. But it's nice to sometimes look and go, you know what, I remember when I was young and I thought that way, or I I acted in those ways and, and I don't anymore. And I'm grateful that I've been able to, you know, have a little bit of insight and look back, like you were saying earlier, maybe I shouldn't have said that, maybe I shouldn't have reacted that way and be a little bit more pulled back and say, look, rather than judging or getting into any side of conflict, show compassion and, and show love and say, you know, um, I understand, that, you know, that's how you feel and understand that's your views on things, but I still love you regardless. And it's kind of nice, you know, as you go through the aging process that you can see, you know, places that you've been that by God's grace, you've been able to kind of you know, get to a more loving spot and then, and then see others that might not have gotten there quite yet, but, but say, look, in order for you to get there, I need to show more love and compassion and, and let you, you know, grow like I had to grow to get to that place where we're all seeing each other as one big family and not divided. So good. Yes. And true. You know, we, we, as you, chronologically mature, then you start looking back, seeing some of the mistakes you made and you do want to correct them and fix them and you want to be a better person. And a lot of it has to do with the way we see from the inside of ourselves and pointing out to others or the way we choose to not live that kind of life and just love one another. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's. It's beautiful. And it goes to what you were saying, you know, we, that's right. All may see. And we all have the ability to activate these supernatural powers where God can bring the wisdom and the knowledge to us. And we can start using those gifts that we're naturally given. So it's it's really a process of number one, you know, getting older and looking at that, but also tapping into the fact that, you know, the Holy Spirit is there and God is within us and that we have the ability to raise ourselves to higher limits of understanding, knowledge, spirituality, love, compassion. So, you know, it's a mixture of things and it actually becomes uh, very euphoric and actually quite beautiful when it really starts to, when you really start to understand that and you do tap into it and you do see it and you do start living that way. I mean, there is a part of it that really becomes very euphoric and actually quite fun and entertaining because you see that life is really this big play and we're all playing it out our parts of what we've been given. And the goal is to write the script that gives us that ability, you know, to be like you were saying, superhuman, supernatural powers and be able to give those and understand that when you start developing that power of love, it's just such a great euphoric gift. And it's the part that, that makes everything else happen and work and as that grows and as you're able to, to to give that out, you get more of it back and it becomes this reciprocal process where that love grows and then the ability to manifest and the ability to heal and the ability to do all these things comes from that foundational place and that foundational understanding that, you know, all of us are working on and tapping into. Yes, and it's positive energy instead of negative energy. Ne mm -hmm. Negative energy always carries a weight that feels terrible and yucky. Positive energy always is a pick-me-up energy. And so why right. waste our time on the negative energy? There's enough negative energy that comes around us that we didn't bring to us, let alone adding it to ourselves. So, yes. Right. Right. And, you know, uh, I think as you get older, you know, conceptually, it's very easy to understand that, hey, um, you know, I like being euphoric and I like being in a loving place and I like manifestation and being in that spot, but life happens, right? And stuff comes sideways and, you know, all of a sudden it's like, hey, you know, this just happened. Uh, 
your shipment that's supposed to be here today is not going to be here. There's 30 people aren't going to get their stuff and you freak out and you get into that mode. And then you say, you know what? I'm in the mode. It's like, okay, but you have to recognize when you've shifted out of that space. And regardless of what life throws at you say, okay, I'm in that space right now, which is stress, anxiety, whatever it might be. Sometimes it's anger. And it's like, I know I'm here. I need to shift back over there. So, you know, the goal, I think, I think as I get older, what I find is that I have to live, I have to live it out more, right? I have to live what I, what I speak. I have to speak into existence what I want to be, but I have to understand that in life, there's going to be a lot of turns and bends. I always like to refer to it as going down the river of life, right? And sometimes it's nice, smooth, and you're on the, you know, inner tube and you're just floating down the river, and sometimes you're going to hit some rapids, which are going to, you know, get you on your edge a little bit. And sometimes you might actually have to go over the waterfall. But ultimately, you know, when you just release to say, I'm going to let the river take its course, I'm putting 100% faith in God. And you know what, whatever comes of this, there will be good that'll come from it. This is part of my life's lessons of what I need to deal with. But mm -hmm. there's that part of letting go and saying, hey, you know what, uh, as it comes to me, I will go inside within and I'll make the best of whatever I can do. And then there's also that part where, you know, you do understand that as life happens, the, sh the quicker you can acknowledge that and shift back into the loving thing and say, okay, there's going to be good that comes out of it. I have to break out of this anger mode that I'm in, or I have to find a way to break out of this um, shift. And sometimes it's with music. Sometimes it's with laughter you know, there's a lot of ways it can be done, but it's identifying that I've moved off base and I and then identifying I need to move back on base. And sometimes it can take an hour. Sometimes it take a minute. Sometimes it's just the instant that you've understood that that's happened to say, OK, back on focus. I'm not, you know, I, OK, back on focus, like steering yourself back on the road, so to speak. That's true. Very true. That's so good that. That's a good sharing. That is like a heart to heart you just shared, Sean, for people mm -hmm. to give a, you know, it gives us more insight and to take notice of where we are at any given time within ourselves, within our being. And, and we figure it out and then shake ourselves out of it as soon as possible. And we can do that. We have the power to do that. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, I always say, too, that there's always good that can come from anything. You know, it's interesting because sometimes, you know, let's say you're late for something or let's say that something has just happened where the person you were supposed to meet didn't show up or some circumstance has occurred. And at the time it's occurring, it can be agitating. It can be frustrating. It can be oh, no, I was supposed to this, this was supposed to happen. And then it might be a week, two weeks, or even three weeks later, and you look back and go, wow, had that happened at that time, that would have changed this and changed that. And now I wouldn't be here. And like another set of circumstances came out of that, which actually were much for your benefit. But at the time it happened, you didn't understand it. And so there is that power of knowing that God is always in control and God is always knowing what is best for us and that we acknowledge and deal with the circumstances life as they come up and say, okay, this is obviously happening. The best thing for me to do right now is work with the situation, not get frustrated, not get upset, but then look at it in an hour or a day or even a week or two or three later and say, wow, okay, I really get that. So if I would have done this at that time and then understand that that really actually at the time was for your benefit. And, you know, so it, it's interesting because so many times in my life now, I'll say, wow, such and such was supposed to be here and there was supposed to be a meeting or whatever. And then I find later that at the same time, something else happened that would actually have been more important for me or a place that I, it got me to somewhere else faster that, that set up a meeting with a person that I would have never met had it, this other thing not happened. And it sets off a chain of events. And, you know, and sometimes you can't see it in the present moment, but from, if you go to the future and look back, you can say, wow, that was perfectly orchestrated by God himself. And, and then you all of a sudden you're grateful and you look at that and say, wow, I, I have to give more love and I have to give more attention to just working with what life gives me 
and navigating down that river of life and saying, okay, you know, this is, this is all happening for a reason. And there's always positive that can come from it. Yeah. So we're still saying we, we, we have to see it and we might not see it at the time, but eventually right. we will see what some occurrence that did or didn't happen take place, how it has benefited our life in one way or another. So yes, yeah. that is it's true. And it's actually really beautiful because as you start even compiling the change those have, experiences, even the go ahead. As you start go compiling ahead. more and more of those types of experiences and you see that happening more and more, then all of a sudden you kind of let go and you just let life happen. You know, you you go with the flow and you don't try to fight the current, as we would say, and say, okay, this is just, this is all, I've, I've had this happen so many times now where I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to make the best of the situation right now and move forward. And then I'll go back later and address what benefits came from this. But I have enough faith and trust in God to know that this is happening for a reason and I don't need to know right now. And I don't need to try to figure it out. I can just go with the flow, make the best of the situation, and then come back to it later and then go through it at, at some you know time in the future. And, and then, quote unquote, see, right? And understand that the part of the seeing is knowing that God's always present. And then we can let things just go from you know the present moment. And and really just let the life you know flow through us in that way, the way God brings it to us. Yes, I agree with that totally, Sean. And you know, even on the other side of all this, what we're talking about, some people can actually really see in the spiritual realm things that are happening even before they happen. Or God could have given a dream, which is a form of seeing, and mm -hmm. in that dream. You wake up and you may not remember all of it, but at some time and point, you'll go, oh, I, I, that or a deja vu from that dream, you know? Yes. So uh, where you've already been there and done that, you've already seen this part of your life happening somewhere, but you know, it didn't really happen unless it happened in the spirit, because now in the natural, you're experiencing it. So we are phenomenal creatures uh, that God has made. And if we just focus, um, somewhat on that, we'll begin to see a lot of things differently in our lives and in others. Right. And life becomes more fun and more joyous and more fulfilling and more loving. And all these great, amazing things start all going with that as you start embracing that and bringing that into your life on a daily basis, not even just on a daily basis, on a moment to moment basis, on a present tense basis, because, you know, as we were just saying, hour by hour, you never know what your day is going to be like. You never know, you know, what, what, you know, might come your way, but if you're present in the moment and you understand that that's your reality and you live it and then deal with it and, and, bring that those supernatural powers into your life to help navigate it it be everything all all of a sudden becomes very fulfilling and very rewarding and and you're really able to give a lot of love because you're living in that place in the heart where you're looking at things from the heart and not so much from the mind or the eyes right that's right that's beautiful i love it what a great call once again. What a great subject. You know, like I said at the beginning of the call, uh, Pastor Dr. Jimmy Reed is with globalmanifestations.org. Um, I love the fact that you signed on with your email address there. And for anybody that's that's you know that's out there that wants to get more information, I always put the web the website will be right down below here where we're speaking. And we have some other really phenomenal. Uh, videos that we've done. This is an ongoing series that we do uh, for, you know, awakening spirituality, becoming better people, loving people. It is all part of everything that we talk and express as far as being healthier, happier people, but it all starts on the inside first. And you have to have that core spiritual loving ability to, to really grow that then from that point forward makes everything else happen. So, Dr. Reed, I absolutely love you. You're amazing. And I'm so grateful for the time we can spend together. 
Um, you know, um, Miss Molly, who's joined us on many calls, um, she's phenomenal. I know she'll probably join us again in the future. Um, Mr. Milo, now you have an event coming up again here in Northern Virginia, right? Very soon, or is it is it next month? When is the event coming? Uh, no, I won't be part of that event. I'll be doing an event. I'll be there in August. The next time August, I'll be there, okay. I'll be in DC in August. Okay. And yes, if I'm not going to be wants... part of the event next month. I was, but yeah. Okay, but you do ongoing events. You are always available. Um, you've got a really great curriculum. Anybody that wants to come to be a part of this, if something in your heart saying, wow, this is really amazing and I want to learn more, go to globalmanifestations.org. Oops, I started hitting on <laughs> I started hitting the table. My screen's bouncing. Um, but but jump in and and be a part of it and uh you know learn more about it. And you do teleconferencing, you have a you know, great staff, amazing people. And I love the fact that when you get all these like-minded people together that are all, you know, in love with God, love with Christ, and you put that energy and power together, you're talking about the ability to do healing, the ability to pray, to help people live better lives. I mean, there's so much power in prayer. We've had, you know, videos, we've talked about that. And the Global Manifestations uh, whole group of people are absolutely phenomenal they are superhuman. They have tapped into their supernatural powers and they are walking the earth right now, sharing those with all of us. And for that and for everything you do, Dr. Jimmy Reed, I am so grateful. And thank you once again for being with us today. Um, before we sign off, is there anything you'd like to finish or anything you'd like to say? Yes, all aim to see. Because God is constantly showing us things all the time. It's just that a lot of times we haven't taken notice. But start practicing. Have your uh, spiritual eyes and ears open daily. Just Not just going through the day, la-di-da, but just be uh, willing to. Because everything that we activate and practice, which is practicing, gets better and better and greater and greater. So, yes. Super exciting. Well, Dr. Reed, thank you once again for all your time today. I will look forward to catching up with you and seeing you again very soon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put everything on pause. So we'll go ahead and say goodbye to everybody. Uh, thanks again for your time. Stay with me and I'll sign off with you and spend another minute or two before we go. Okay. Bye, everyone.